Amen. You may be seated. We are to be blessed this morning. We are to receive this morning. As we have been blessed in our congregation to not only have an abundance of members, but we have an abundance of gifts. If the gifts were not with the members, God wouldn't even be in it. So we are blessed this morning with one of our preachers is going to come. We give them opportunity to come and give what we call a devotional message or devotional sermon. And whoever is here, look at your neighbor and say, this must be for me. Don't be thinking it's for somebody else. It's for you. And we're going to call up right now someone who we are very proud of, one of our very own sons of this church, Minister Adam Levine. Let's receive him while we put our hands together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you, God, and we thank you for this opportunity and this day. Holy Spirit, I pray that you take control of me, God, and that your word would be spread forth as a bread in front of a table, God. And I thank you very much in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. amen. So, you know, giving honor to God, my Father, Jesus, my Savior, and the Holy Spirit, my, my teacher and guide. Also to Pastor Ho, I love you, appreciate you. And, of course, y'all and my mom and dad. <laughs> but um, this chain's got links in it, and it can make a circle. But without it, it wouldn't be a chain, so it wouldn't fulfill its purpose. Now, prayer is similar because prayer isn't about getting your will done. It's about the giving of your will so his purpose can be fulfilled. That's the circle of prayer. Now, the Apostle Paul starts this chapter talking about love, which is far above every gift. And so he says, and now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, it does seem like a strange text to read for prayer, yet this scripture has everything to do with prayer. It has prayer's elements. And by the way, the topic is the elements, or the, the eternal elements of prayer. But a lot of us wonder what's needed in prayer. And without these three things, there is no answer prayer. Because without faith, we can't get an answer. Without hope, we can't make it to see the evidence of our faith. And without love, we can't pray for people. These three elements are, are what is needed. And it takes it, our prayer life, and it makes it more exciting and fresh and purposeful. So since you win all your battles on your knees, yeah, yeah. it's important to know what these three things do, can do concerning prayer. Now faith, faith enables you to see into the future. Faith enables you to, faith enables you to look beyond your circumstances, your situations. So you can see yourself getting off of drugs. You can see yourself going back to church or coming to church, joining church. You can see yourself getting a degree free of gambling and alcoholism. Or you can see your, your child coming back home in the right mind, and you can get the right mate, not the one that you think you want, but the right one. So faith is needed because it's the initiation of God in petition. It's coming to God saying, I need something from you, Daddy. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence. Now, in a crime scene, they've got something like this. They don't, they don't use a paintbrush, but they got something like this. And what they do is they rip it up, and they just take a fingerprint. Now, Christian singles and people in a relationship, what in the world are you doing allowing people to come into your life that you don't see the fingerprint of God on their daily life? Now, now check this out. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you bless this. This is, this is, this is me, 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 in Jesus' name. Now, it's easy to have faith in that moment, but time tests faith. So, in other words, what I call, you have to have Abrahamic faith. Yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. the Bible says, but he staggered not at the promise of God through faith, and faith given to God. So in other words, you've got to praise God before you see it happen. <laughs> so praise fights doubt. And the truth of the matter is doubt stops faith, and faith stops doubt. Now, hope is needed because hope is the vehicle which drives us to the place of our faith. Yeah. Hope is an awesome power that we tap into, one of the most powerful things in the world. But hope also enables us to endure anything that may come our way between the time that you pray and the time that God answers. Hope is a confident expectation that God will do exactly what he promised in the Bible, regardless of circumstances. Now... 
Your hope should warmly embrace trials because it prepares you for the situations and circumstances and it prepares you for the blessing that you've been praying for. Now, love is also essential to prayer. A prayer without love in your heart isn't love. Prayer is, uh, love is a prerequisite for prayer. Now, love can restore a broken marriage, a broken family, and sometimes it'll make you be humble enough to go to somebody and say, I'm sorry, even when you were right. And the truth is, love can heal the deepest heartaches, and love is the most powerful weapon on the face of the planet. Now, hope was a powerful weapon, but love is the most powerful weapon. Now, you can't just have a love for God. You know, Jesus commanded that we pray for our enemies. He didn't suggest it. Jesus said, <laughs> prayer is how God takes, like, when we pray, God takes the vengeful feelings that we have for other people, and he puts his godly feelings inside of us so we can truly pray for them. Not say something like, Lord, flatten all their tires in Jesus' name. You know, because that's not going to work. Mike, I need you. <laughs> hey. Oh, I got I to gotta mute this mic. I can't let y'all know. Okay, so Mike is a picture of God, looking really nice, too. But <laughs> the truth is, okay, this hula hoop, it represents life, it represents its trials, its good times, its bad times. And, uh, you know, if you look at it, it's like, well, I can, I can do this. Oh, wait. You mean you want me to do it on my, my knees? You want me to get through this on my knees? Okay. Wow, wow. wow. So, so... So what happens is, as you go through your trials and tribulations, it's kind of hard because you got to struggle because this jacket represents the flesh, the natural self. And as you come through, as you come through, you'll realize, as you come through, you'll realize that, you know, your flesh is being ripped off, you know, all, and you can... You can forgive people that you vowed to never forget, people that are dead. That you, I mean, come on, if they're dead, you should be able to forgive them by now. Come on now. Let's be realistic. They're gone. You're still here. But, but when you come out of a trial, perhaps even a good thing for God is always in His purposes. Now, you might not understand it, but in time, you'll be able to look back and understand what God was doing when you were down and you were praying. Now, God always does things to fulfill his purpose. And the beauty of that is that God has allowed us to be a part of that purpose. So don't wait until you get cleaned up or you think you need to get cleaned up before you come to God. Just come to God and God will do all the cleansing. God is waiting on you. And now abide with faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is love. I'm done.